back, been around the world. What's going on? Today, what we're going over in group class is a cash out, something we finish at the end of the workout when the workout is all said and done. We throw something, a little spice in there, and that spice is called the hollow rock. Um, for many people, they've never done this. It's a real specialty of gymnastics, but something that CrossFit incorporated uh, into their training protocol. And the idea with the hollow rock is that we want to learn how to stabilize the midline. It's a term we use here in CrossFit, which means uh, can I get the athlete to learn how to brace the middle of their body from here, from neck to pelvis. And what we know and recognize about all movement is that the individual needs to learn how to stabilize their midline through motion no matter what movement it is. It's how they protect the spine. It's how they produce power. It comes from the midline. So it's a fancy term we use in CrossFit just to mean to stabilize. Can we contract and stabilize everything here that protects my spine? The hollow rock is a great way to teach individuals how to do that because it, it, it is a midline developer. I'll show it real quick and then talk about some things that you might want to consider. Uh, remember, these videos are for two types of people, for coaches, uh, teaching coaches, right? Me, a coach, teaching other coaches, and then uh, how to teach athletes as a coach, what athletes should consider when they're moving through this. So let me show them the hollow rock, hollow rock rock there are two different unique features of that the hollow position and the rocking position it's so hard to appreciate that movement if you've never done it because i know i make that look easy but it's not easy to rock like that especially at our baseline we test baseline at 60 second hollow rock holds fully extended meaning bicep over ear fully locked out and hips fully open, knees and ankles fully extended. So the hollow position is one where uh, it's a synonymous with, you know, intra-abdominal pressure. Another term is Valsalva maneuver. They're all, the angle of all these techniques are the same, and that's can I create pressure at midline in this area to help do two things, stabilize the spine so we don't jack it up, and two, to, uh, to teach a bracing mechanism for all movement. Now, in powerlifting, we say it's very convenient in powerlifting to hold your breath because you're working at one rep maxes, right? When you're testing at a powerlifting meet, you, don't, you have enough time to control, or excuse me, hold your breath through the entire motion. In CrossFit, you don't have that convenience, and so we have to teach athletes how to brace at max capacity when needed and to breathe at full capacity, right? And the hollow rock teaches that. I'll show you that. This is me bracing, punching myself in the gut, bracing, and then the breathing. I will do them both at the same time because we say in CrossFit, you don't have that convenience. You can't do one or the other. You always have to do both in movement, and it looks like this. You're doing both at the same time. An athlete that can't do that is one that struggles, produces inefficiency in movement, or just has terrible technique. Because they, they either breathe and don't brace, or they brace and don't breathe. So you can see the problem there at high intensity interval training. The hollow position is one where create intra-abdominal pressure and hold that pressure. We can geek out about what stupid muscles are doing that. It doesn't matter, right? What we know is that this area and this area needs to be contracted. We do the hollow position or teach the hollow position as one where we concave the ribs into pelvis and lock that position by bracing. Whatever position you brace will be locked in place, meaning I could stay here, locked out in place, and now I got this shitty position that I've locked in place. So we want to teach athletes which position we want them to lock in place. Ours is work. we minimize the depth from rib cage to pelvis and lock that in place, and now we have the hollow. This is the only movement I know in CrossFit that we encourage a slightly rounded back. There's no other movement that I know of that we encourage a slightly rounded back. The reason for that is if we keep the back rigid, and flat, you're going to lose the rocking motion. What ends up happening, you end up pancaking your back to the ground. We call that a uh, back belly flop, and it's not what you want to see, and you can see it from all the way. This is wrong, incorrect, don't want to see. I think that becomes, there's two reasons for that. One is we sell flat back so much that it's all they know, which is great. Uh, but they just need to know how to change the nuances a little bit. Uh, but two, 
I think individuals do that because they've done so many damn sit-ups in their lives. They're so used to wrestling. Is why I don't like a preference over crunches to hollow rocks or vice versa. I don't think you should ever do one of anything. The sit-up encourages a resting motion. When we put sit-ups in a workout, it is a rest, right? Because it doesn't take a lot of work. You're only moving on the way up and not on the way down. We're using gravity to rest. Here's a crunch, sit-up, whatever in the heck you want to call this. And so you see what happens there, right? I completely go to relaxed state at the bottom, and then I only contract and work on the way up. That's great for efficiency purposes. It's not good to teach how to uh, maintain stability at midline through uh, tension, through exercise. The hollow rock is so hard because you have to maintain tension, excuse me, on both ends, whether you're coming up or coming down. I'll show it again now that you notice it. On both ends. Again, I make that look easy. It is not easy when done that way. So, right, that we are a all-inclusive group class experience. How do we get people to move similarly to that with different backgrounds, experiences, and past injuries? Well, we do that by moderating the lever system. It's the levers. It's the arms and legs being extended from my body that places an immense amount of pressure on my belly. So we have to, for some people, take that out by compressing them by bringing their hands and feet closer to the body. So if that was the most difficult version, what's the most easiest version of the hollow rock? That's a fully compressed knee to chest and hands inside or downward. It looks like this. Now notice, again, it's quite tempting to want to lay down when you come down to the back of the rocking position. But as coaches, you have to see that from a mile away and nip that in the bud as early as possible because if you don't, it's, gonna, it's hard to break that habit. It's really hard for people to break that habit. And what we're looking for there is that the athlete can concave their chest and keep it concave the entire time. Let me show you that. That's this, slightly rounded and cave. If they do this, if their chest comes up towards the sky, you know that they've broken the rocking position. Again, the rock is a rocking chair motion. It is this here locked in place by bracing. And the moment the individual un, uh, flattens the back or unlocks it, you know that they have broken at midline. There's something going on there that we need to work. And the easy tactile cue, a touching cue that you can use with your individuals, I use it all the time, is just a, pretending that I'm about to gut punch them. I don't really do it. I do it quite softly. I don't do it with my fingers. This is that personal area, right? It's just, hey, right? I want them to know I'm about to come there. They see my fist coming at them, and you'll, you'll see them. They'll, they'll come and engage a little bit more than they would if you weren't creating that tactile cue, right? You can't just yell all the time and tell people to brace their belly. Some people don't even know what that means, so we want to teach that. So we have zero to here. I showed you the most minimized way of doing the hollow rock and the maximized version, the most difficult version, which is arms fully extended, feet fully extended. What's the in-between? What am I looking for as a coach? Well, the standard is we can't break. So if this is hyper arched, that is great for slightly flat back, rigid position. And where we want hollow is right about there. So it's not flat, it's not hyper arched. When they lay down as a coach, I got those Hawkeyes looking to see if there's an athlete that is arched, because that's a no-no. So if they're coming in here and they start to rock and they're doing this, we know they're broken because they have that arch position. It's also how we find the perfect length of arms and legs for them on the hollow rock. Because at fully, at fully modified, everybody's back is pushing down. It's slightly rounded. But as they bring it out and they can't control, they break at midline. We'll bring them back up come back down, break at midline. If that height is the same, we know that's their maximal length for, all, for their feet, their extension of. So we bring them slightly back up a few inches and that's where they're gonna develop their hollow rock and so they can easily and smoothly rock through that motion for an entire minute. Until then, there's no need, if not dangerous to, fully extend them, bicep to ear and legs fully locked out uh, slightly above the ground here. The other thing to notice, which is hard to notice, it's very tempting to want to flick 
your hip open and closed, your legs, because uh, individuals will use that as a cheating mechanism for rocking. But that's not what's happening. What we're just taking is this kind of smooth rocking chair motion and letting natural gravity just kind of bring us up and down, right? To do that, you want to make sure as a coach, you're not letting the athlete flick their hips open and close. I'll show you that. It's clearly obvious now that, you, that I've explained it. That's flicking. We don't want to see that. For basic math purposes, let's say uh, we know a straight line is 180 degrees. If this is 180 degrees here at hip, if I come up about 170, that's the RX version, the most difficult version that we have. What we just want to see is the athletes not moving from 170 to 90 degrees in the middle of the rock. That's a huge no-no. We don't want to see this. That's not what's happening. It's exactly what we don't want to see. So, and it doesn't matter which angle they hold their hip. What's most important is that the angle is maintained through the entire rock. You can treat these as strength sets, five by 10, five by 20, five by 30. It doesn't matter. What we have said multiple days in a row is that the only way to layer stack skills, skill acquisition 101, is to be able to do something consistently enough that it becomes natural. And then once that response doesn't have uh, doesn't change, then we need to build and challenge that response a little bit more. The hollow rock is easy because we do it based on sets and time domains. Uh, an athlete should learn how to do five by 10 seconds beautifully and five by 15 and 25 and 50 until they build up a minute. Once they get to five by one minute and if they are modified, then it's time to extend them further out, bicep to ear, feet fully um, extended slightly above the ground. So hollow position is phenomenal it's something that we want to continue to endorse that all athletes learn how to do because it's just not for the sake of let me bring bring sexy abs back it's it teaches a primary principle of all movement of all movement of any sport and any training protocol and is does the individual recognize and understand the power of midline and its capacity to be controlled and stabilized through motion some of the best athletes in the world do it without thinking so we want to get our athletes to start thinking a little bit more about what is the purpose of midline how do we strengthen it and how does it transfer into becoming a better athlete, a fitter individual? So I hope that helps us a lot of shit to remember. Uh, just take one thing. I I've said this over and over about learning new things. It's what's the one thing that you can implement today, not the 20, 30 things that I just gave you. What's that one thing that sticks with you that you can remember, put it into the program, try it yourself from there as that starts to become a little bit more